morning meeting to order. First thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any citizens to be heard of stuff that's not on the agenda? Mark, do you have anything you need to bring forward? You just came to see a good operation in motion. Oh, there. Okay, <laughs> very good. Okay, with that, we'll go on the approval of the minutes. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to the approval of the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, approved. Payment of bills and vouchers. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the bills. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> With that we'll move into, uh, we want to recognize uh, St. John's Church in Georgetown. We made a $200 donation to the uh, Clay County for some work the Sentence to Serve people did out there and really appreciate that donation from St. John's Church. Thank you very much. With that will go into committee assignments, which you have before you. Uh, is there anybody that's got some questions on them or want any changes made? <coughs> Grant, we'll start with you. Do you have any? Yeah, I'm good. Jenny, do you have anything? I think it looks good for the year. Kevin? Uh, Mr. I do have a couple of things here. The um, FM Diversion Authority, if they, uh, look, Colleen, if we can just take the vice chair off of that, I will not be the vice chair uh, this coming year. Um, then also, um, going down a few, we have a, a Minnesota Diversion Authority dash JPA, and we have a Morehead Clay County JPA diversion. They're the same thing. Uh, so um, I think maybe we can just remove one of those. Which one do you want? To uh, I would say I would say keep the Morehead Clay County JPA in and just get rid of the Minnesota Diversion Authority JPA. Okay. Okay. All right. There, because the same thing. And then... Um, well, you want it the same wording because it's on grants too, so make sure... And yeah, <coughs> same thing should be done in grants. And then, and then also, um, it shows me as an alternate for the FM Diversion Land Management, and I am not an alternate, I am I am a designated by the Diversion Authority to be on land management, so I would not be an alternate there. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, Commissioner Mojo, I'm wondering if um, on the, let's see, um, the, reg the uh, water plan joint powers with the Red River Basin Commission, it's showing me as the delegate and you as the alternate. I, I would like to switch that if we could. I think you have more, uh, I've been going to those. Places. And I haven't because I have a conflict with uh, Prairie Lakes right. in most cases. So okay. if we could just switch that where Commissioner Mojo would be the regular delegate and I'd be the alternate. Okay. And then, and then just for clarification on the Morehead Business Association, that, that really isn't a voting member. I, I mean, we're members, but... The, most of the voting, I think, on that is done by the um, executive committee. I don't know that the board of directors. Yeah, the board of directors does okay. the voting. I don't know that members they ever go out to members for votes. And if they do, then it would, you know, we would automatically qualify whoever is okay. there representing. I think because at the bottom of the page it does say more business association on all of ours. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah, almost I, something that should be added to all of it. Oh, it does say it. Okay. Well, I, you know, I think whoever, you know, if there's, I guess there would be, if, if there's more than one, if they were to take a vote, then only one can vote. So maybe, maybe we should just leave that then. Because I, then we have Jim as the alternate. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because the Morehead Business Association isn't on everybody's, is it? Well, at the it bottom it is. Bottom, so if you go to a meeting, that's part of everybody's. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. 
my understanding is that any member of the Moorhead Business Association can vote for the board of directors. Oh, can vote for the board of directors? I yeah. believe so. Yeah. Okay. That's the only vote. Yeah, but, but each entity is only allowed, I'm sure each entity is only allowed one vote, and that's where the issue comes in is who would who would vote for okay. on behalf of Clay County for that. So then maybe we better just leave it then. And then if you're the if you're the designated alternate, if I'm not there, then you would yeah. automatically get to vote. Sure. Or maybe we could just show all all others as alternates. That's what we did with the planning commission. Maybe that's what we should do. Yeah. Maybe if we could just down on the bottom, um, or just have everybody listed as MBA alternates. Okay. And then if there's if there's more than one there, then <coughs> obviously only one gets to vote. And it's, but that's those are the corrections I have. Okay. Jim, did you have any? Nope. And I'm okay. So, um, just move to adopt them. Okay. I have mo need a motion to adopt the changes. Motion to adopt. Second. Uh, motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So, we'll get a new list of this of the assignments. Thank you, Clean. With that, we'll go on to Lori. We have a vacancy out of the this right here? Yeah, motor vehicle department. Good morning, Lori. Um, yeah, I'd like to request to fill the uh, supervisor position on our motor vehicle. Uh, been the retiring after 42 years. Wow. Yeah. Already, huh? Yeah, already. I mean, <laughs> unexpected. Barely yeah. made probation period, I guess. Yeah, so if I could, I'd request to fill that and backfill if necessary. Okay. There'd be. Um, for 2020, it'd be pretty much a wash because there's a, pay, a severance payout. But in following years, it'd be about twenty thousand dollars savings. Mm -hmm. I move to approve the request. Second. Okay. okay, we have a motion by Grant, second by Jim. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Post. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Also, want to thank her for what a tenure yeah. with us. Yeah, well, it's a long time. Absolutely. Okay, with that, we'll go into the voting equipment grant. Yeah, the legislature made available some uh, about $2 million of, of uh, money, of funds for voting equipment to replace. And we did replace all of our counting equipment a couple years ago, but now we need that assistive voting equipment replaced. So I'd like to apply for that. I'm not sure, depending on how much money we get, we could get $5,000, we could get $400. And if we got the $400, I think I, I would wait a couple more years to get the equipment because we have to spend it this year. But we could get some more pull pads. Uh, there's only a 25% match if we got a lesser amount. So I'd like permission to apply for that voting equipment grant. Okay. So I was going to ask, uh, Lori, when you apply for that, do you, do you ask for a specified amount? Um, no, no, I, in the grant I it's, it's, you get an amount per precinct. Oh, okay. Not necessarily, you're awarded based on number of precincts. I see. And so you do kind of ask for an amount, but it's based on the maximum per precinct. Okay. So every every precinct in the state has has the potential of getting the same dollar amount per Correct. precinct. Correct, and that's why it's, it could be, five, the maximum is 5,000, but could be like $436, and in that case, the assistive voting equipment is five thousand dollars. So, um, but we trying to limp through this presidential election now with the ones we have, and then in two years buy buy new ones. But we'll definitely need to buy some by then. Just so we don't have any hanging chads or anything. Like for our with those. <laughs> <laughs> I got those that kind of equipment when I started. I know. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> Okay, I, I would I, I would uh, move approval to go forward with the grant applications. Okay, we got a motion for a resolution 2020-07. Uh, I'll second the motion. We got a motion by. Are you second? Okay. Yes. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. That will go into. <clears throat> Sheriff M. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. So here today I'd like to uh, 
replace our current UTV that we have. We have a 2009 Polaris Ranger. It's a six-seater with an open cab on it. Um, really, what I'm looking to do is have something a little bit more of a practical use for us to be able to use this current, or to be able to use this piece of equipment year-round. Our current piece of equipment will park after roll log. We uh, won't take it out until maybe May when uh, there's a request from the Mort Police Department to use it for the marathon. If they don't request it, then it might not come out of storage until June, July sometime. So what we're looking to do with this particular new piece of equipment or replacement piece of equipment would be to have a heated cab. Uh, we'd be able to put tracks on it. We'd be able to use it in the wintertime as like a rescue vehicle if we have people stranded in places we can't reach with our squad cars. Uh, we'd have a heated place for them to be able to bring back to the squad car to where they're safe. We'd also be able to use it for investigations if we have areas back near the woods where we can't get to with our squads. We'd be able to use that heat to keep our equipment warm. We'd be able to use it during the flood time to be able to get to places where we're not able to get to um, with our squad cars either. Um, just kind of a more of a practical purpose for us to be able to use it uh, year round rather than have something sitting in a garage for most of the time we're not using it. Um, I did indicate that uh, the sale of our current UTV, we put those funds back in internal service. Um, after talking to a couple of our deputies, our current trailer may be a little tight. So what I would ask is that uh, the current sale of our, of our, uh, our UTV, we put that back into a different trailer if possible. Um, we're not going to know until we get tracks on it and actually see what the width is and things like that. I'm going to approve the request. Second. Any discussion? What type of vehicle are you looking at now? Looking at uh, two different types. I got two bids from our local Clay County businesses here. One is a uh, from Moorhead Marine for a, a UTV Defender is what it's called, and another one's from RDO for a Gator. Um, the one from <coughs> Moorhead Marine, the UTV itself is a little bit lower uh, in price, but the tracks are higher, and then. From, uh, from RDO, it's just the opposite, right. where the gator is a little right. higher, the tracks are lower in price, but they both came in at the same same quote. Um, just think that the gator for us right now has a little few more options that we'd be looking for. How about we had the other one? It's a 2009. Okay. So we've had that one for 11 years mm -hmm. now. Yeah, we got any use out of that one or? We have got some use out of oh. it, yeah. It's just, uh, like I said, it's a six-seater, so it's practical purposes for us yeah. in the wintertime. It's just it's not that good. It's an yeah, open cab. Sometimes I wonder would just, we say, well, we've got an internal service fund, but it's, it won't cost us anything. Yeah, it will cost us It something. does, yep. It, it does, does cost us something, yep. I, I did, uh, so. <coughs> I, I did have the local police department reach out and request to purchase that one, you know, depending on the price and things like that. We'll see if we can sell that and the trailer to them. It's kind of a package deal if uh, the trailer doesn't fit our, our current needs. Okay. It makes sense, I think, to have a tracked vehicle, oh. too, in your... Right. Yeah. It does. Form. Yeah. yeah. Just a couple questions. Um, so how, how, how high is does that thing ride? I mean, so like if you're going through water, how much water can you go through? You can't go through a lot of water with it. One of our deputies has one of their own personal ones, and he tried to use it as a submarine. Didn't board. work very good? Didn't work okay. very good. And once you get those things stuck, um, yeah. they're stuck. It's going to okay. take a while to get them out. So you can't go through a ton of water with them. Okay. Um, Mud and stuff, yes? Mud and stuff, yes. Okay. But the higher clearance is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. there's a higher yeah, clearance, that's, and yeah. the track itself is yeah. obviously... Yeah. And, yeah. and then does that does that have a a um, flat bed behind it then or there would be yes yeah. there's there's a box type bed behind it where we would yeah. be able to put equipment in if we needed to get it back into an area yeah. okay even sandbags you know mm -hmm. be able yeah to take pumps a ton or of sandbags something if you had to get a pump to somebody back okay. and forth yep okay. pumps sandbags things like that okay well in some of the rural areas that could come in real handy mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you okay. Any further discussion? Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of purchasing the vehicle, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're already heading to the end of the meeting here. Committee reports. We'll start with Kevin today. Oh, okay. So, um, last uh, January 9th, I had a Lakes Country Service Cooperative meeting 
in uh, Fergus Falls. And there's really, uh, I think the, the biggest thing is the, uh, I need a couple of notes here, I wasn't quite ready for this. Yet. Um, the new school that they have in Fergus Falls there now is uh, up and running, uh, which, is, which is a good thing. Um, and then there's um, uh, there's been some uh, uh, funding issues with the YES program and some of those things that are going on. I think that's probably happening throughout the school districts. And so there's going to be some efforts going on through the Minnesota legislature. And I ask that we be um, brought up to date on any House and Senate files for when we're in St. Paul on uh, that last part of February. So if there's something that we can help with there, we can do so. so. And then yesterday we had, um, we had our two meetings um, on the construction project. Uh, the first one being the jail and the LEC, and that is really um, wrapping up. Um, I think we're looking at uh, um, 22nd. the 22nd, yeah, is, is getting the inspection and hopefully get that turned over. Um, that's going very well. Then the, uh, the, um, like the regional juvenile center meeting, um, we are looking for a DOT inspection on the non-secure portion. Uh, I think it's on January 29th, my notes show. <coughs> which time, once that's done, uh, we'll get the certificate of occupancy and this, the non-secure will be ready to go. Uh, so that's the end of this month. So that's good news. Uh, the secure portion, the DOT inspection is scheduled around March 13th. And so that we're looking at that as being about the time for um, overall completion on the 16th, I think, is what, what the, my note said from yesterday. So that's getting closer. And I do want to go back and um, the questions that were raised last week regarding the, um, you know, we were certainly there were some, current, some concerns about the contingency and why we weren't no, but I. I want to point out, uh, I think Commissioner Gross, you asked some questions regarding where we were with the dollars. And if you recall back in, uh, I think it was October, we all were handed this, this sheet uh, in terms of, at that particular time, the owner contingency was at 229,000, the contractor because it was plus 72,000 for a negative, total negative 156,000. We were anticipating, no, we had no new contingencies of 30,000, which brought us up to 186,000. And then we were, were saying, then we put in there in a, in a worst case scenario, if we were to have 170,000 more in, in contingencies. And then the FF&E, uh, I think that number, did we, did we end up granting that yet? That, Additional FF&E. I believe I believe he did come forward on that. But it didn't end up being a hundred thousand. I don't believe so. Yeah. So anyway, just to just to update you, based on yesterday's numbers, where we anticipated a worst case scenario being at uh, four hundred and fifty six thousand, we are right now sitting at three hundred and ninety two thousand. So, and then we had, uh, you know, how we pay for that 392,000. This is, we had worked with Lori on this, and we had, uh, we had the 215,000, that was the bond premium dollars that could use to go against that, which would leave 177,000. And we still had um, uh, over, over, 241,000 in revenues over expenditures from 2018 that we said could be applied to that. So we're still we're still tracking in that range, and hopefully with two months to go, we won't see a whole lot. I know there's 
There's a lot more demolition going on on the second floor. And they did say, see there's some things, but there's nothing quite as significant as what there had been on, on some of the other stuff. So just wanted to update there. So we're still, we're still in a position where we have the funds to pay for these overruns. Thank you. What the original what the original bid was. We're not we're not over what the original bid was. Then are we? Or? Yeah. Oh well. Yes. Yeah. Because the w w within the gross maximum price, we had established a certain amount for contingencies. So the dollar amounts that we're talking about here are what we were over in that contingency, which means that's over and above the gross maximum price. Okay. That's so that's what we're talking about here. And, and again, that's it's not a, really a surprise when you're dealing with remodeling, you know, because there's so many unknowns. So that concludes my report. Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, on Tuesday, I went to the City of Moorhead Planning uh, meeting, commission meeting, and there was a request for rezoning in the Holiday Mall area along 11th Street on the east side of that property, just south of River Point Senior Living Facility. There's a vacant lot there, and uh, when the developer sold it to the other developer many years ago, they made a gentleman's agreement that there was going to be retail on the first floor of the apartment building that was going to be put up there. And when the plans came out, uh, there was a request for us to vary that and, and to allow this building to be constructed without retail. So there was a little bit of a, a stir about that before the meeting. But then at the, when the meeting came, the, the second developer said that he was going to pull it off the table and rescind the request for the zoning change. Because if and when he ever does decide to build, he will put retail on the main floor and hopefully underground parking. So that was all of that meeting. Then on uh, Wednesday morning, I attended the Northwest Radio Emergency Communication Board meeting through ITV. And we had a grants update, election of officers, and a continuing discussion regarding dispatcher retention, which is a difficult topic. And, uh, and then that was it on that one. And then, um, uh, was it Friday? Thursday. I'm sorry, Thursday. Uh, the Clay County Local Advisory Committee for Children's Mental Health met, and uh, Kids Fest is coming up April 18th at the Moorhead Center Mall. And we're currently gathering information on the strengths of the Clay County Children's Mental Health System, gathering information on gaps in services, service providers, families, communities. And then we heard agency reports. The Mobile Mental Health Crisis Team had 102 calls in December and 17 dispatches in Clay, 20 in Otter Tail. And the Juvenile Center has hired nine new employees in anticipation of the completion of the new facility. Um, all the beds are nearly full, both in the non-secure and in the secure at this point in time. That's my total report. Okay. Well, let's see, I had to uh, be on the Yellow Ribbon meeting and we had reports from various organizations that support that, uh, the VA and and some of the service organizations. Uh, Kevin already reported on the uh, construction meetings yesterday. Everything is going pretty well there. And uh, let's see, we uh, what did you? We had a we had a meeting with uh, some diversion folks last oh, week on, on the. Uh, yeah, and then on public out, outreach yeah. issues, and uh, that was that was a pretty productive meeting, I thought. So, hopefully, we'll have some some uh, things change with public outreach and some improvements. So that was it for me. Jenny. All right, thank you. Last week, I attended the Soil and Water Conservation District meeting. It was the first meeting of the year. So there were several items that they needed to cover just for that. There is a new uh, chair there, Joel Hildebrand's the new chair. And I think um, Paul Krabenoff has been chair for 20 years. So it's a, a big change. They're working on a lawn to legumes application and then uh, we'll have several meetings, uh, crop update coming up next week and cover crop landowner meetings as well. So is Paul still on the board? <clears throat> he is still on the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. I attended the Cass Clay Food Systems Commission meeting last week. 
We appointed a new at-large member, had a jurisdiction spotlight the city of Moorhead, and had presentations on weed biology from Dr. Gremig from NDSU and Mike Schroeder from uh, Moorhead Parks and Rec Maintenance. They elected a new chair uh, because Clay County is serving or hosting. I am the new chair of that as well, so um, more to come from them. I attended the Metrocog Executive Committee meeting. We are in the process of making some updates to the personnel policy and uh, discussed some upcoming maternity and paternity leaves that will happen. And there are two CDs that are maturing, so they're in the process of seeking out what the best option for that is. Um, and had another update on the FM diversion rec plan governance discussion. It's, I mean, there more discussion has to happen there, but Metrocog is really not in the position to serve in that capacity at all. And, um, you know, obviously because all of our entities are at the diversion authority as well, uh, I understand that, that that discussion needs to happen, but Metrocog really is not in the position for that. I had a AMC ex uh, extension committee meeting uh, because I'm the chair. I had to discuss several items for the upcoming year. Uh, we are in the process of reviewing the 4-H Youth Award applications that go out on at the legislative conference. We'll uh, determine those winners <clears throat> and what the highlight focus of the year is. Extension is in the process of doing some pretty profound outreach to um, farmers and mental health and it was my choice to continue that focus and because so many of us work with rural uh, com communities as well I kind of felt like it was a good way to see what they're doing and then bring it to our farmers especially in the, the crisis that they are um, experiencing. I had a couple of citizen calls. Uh, one was from a uh, Holly Township advisor or um, uh, supervisor. township supervisor, thank you, um, about internet service and the Boughton subdivision. Apparently, it it really is significantly limited in, in what they're able to access. And I know because both of you are on the rural committees, communities, uh, I think we really need to advocate for that. I mean, that's that's a subdivision on a major highway in between two. Um, by a, a large area of people, and so for them to not have internet service, I think yeah, we, need to, we need to reach out. Um, I made a call to um, our our legislative reps about that. We also I had a call from Bison sub Bison Ridge subdivision about that road concern. Um, if you recall, when that went in, there's a an area that they needed to tweak a little bit, and so it sounds like they've. They've reached an impasse on that, so I'm going to make some phone calls to see. Is that uh, towards oh, the landfill area? Uh, well, it's north and east yeah. of the landfill yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. We drove there. <coughs> yeah, um, yeah. So then yesterday I attended, uh, as chair now of the Cass Clay Food Partners, I attended the steering committee of the food partners. I feel like there's been a disconnect for a while in what the steering committee wants and what the commission wants, and I feel like it's important to have a representative there to help mold those discussions. So uh, a really good dialogue, and um, we'll, we'll just keep trudging forward, I guess. So that concludes my reports. Yeah, I went to the, well, last Wednesday, I went to Wild Rice a Watershed Board meeting, and most, uh, a lot of the meeting was taken up with they're trying to realign a ditch somewhere and they're trying to get um, easements for some land and having a lot of problems doing that. Um, so hopefully they can work that out. Um, uh, the other thing on the Wild Rice Watershed, uh, I know Cheney, you're the ultimate there. Cheney, we're 27th. They got a one watershed, one uh, plan. Uh, do we still have that master planning meeting coming up on January 27th also? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, so I don't know if you want to. I, I, we have the annual meeting um, at Lakeland, I think, the 27th, or I okay. do, so I don't well, know. Well, I'll just have to let them know not. We can't make that, then okay. uh, hopefully some of the other members can, so. Okay. Okay, um, other than that, I had, um, 
<clears throat> the volunteers for the Historical Society, we had that uh, recognition on Thursday. And uh, they're looking for more volunteers. So if there's anybody in the county that would like to, or anywhere wants to volunteer at the Historical Society, they're, they're looking for volunteers, some, uh, whether you want to work three hours, four hours, whatever the case may be there. They're looking for some help there. Um, very uh, people that have worked there said, very interesting. You meet people from all over the country coming in there, you know, when you're helping out there. So it's a very interesting job. Uh, also, they're looking for a member. I don't know if we're going to call them a member, but for some of them, Clay County here. Uh, I talked about this before. There, It's 150 years recognition for Clay County coming up, not till 2022, I think, but uh, they're planning on that. Uh, Marcus is already working on planning for that uh, thing. So. If, I don't know if there's someone here in Clay County that's very knowledgeable of what's going on. Uh, uh, I guess we should have, I, I shouldn't say knowledgeable, but everybody knows what's going on around here. But <laughs> <laughs> No, we got someone, uh, someone that uh, could help out that. I don't know what, uh, I think they would like for someone to participate in that group there. So, Okay, and I think that's for me, Steve. I thank Mr. Chair. Uh, last Tuesday, I attended the uh, meeting with the Mobile Mental Health Crisis Unit, Rhonda Porter and, and Lakeland Mental Health, and they're, they're continuing to look uh, explore greater use of the program for the schools and law enforcement. Uh, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I had a couple different meetings with uh, Troy and Kathy in, on the detox issue, and Joe uh, with uh, some of the insurance, uh, some of the issues that they had with the, with the uh, sprinkler head back in uh, right before Christmas. Um, a uh, there's a number of department head evaluations in, in January, so we've been working on those. Uh, I also attended the diversion uh, communication plan meeting with Commissioner Whalen and Commissioner Campbell. Uh, yesterday we had uh, we had a, a new higher orientation. I think we welcomed six new employees to Clay County. Uh, I also participated in the two owners meetings, uh, both for the, for the corrections facility and, and the juvenile facility. Uh, just to, to, to note, those additional beds uh, are, are the beds will be for the transition program, the new program, and they already have a waiting list uh, for those for those beds. So, um, uh, and uh, just uh, lastly, uh, one of the things that, uh, that that the board has asked each year is to get an update on the sales tax, and, and so I have uh, some information. For you. Thank you. As I mentioned, uh, uh, each year this board has requested just to have an annual update of, of uh, where we where we uh, land each year on our sales tax collection. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, last in 2017-18, we we uh, had two million four hundred ninety-one thousand three hundred and forty-seven dollars. This past calendar year, uh, that uh, sales tax increased to two million nine hundred twenty-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars uh, and forty-two cents. Um, it looks like there was a big uh, there was a big jump, but part of that is people getting on board and collecting the tax in the first part of 2000. You know, the 17-18. It wasn't there also yeah. the internet thing was resolved? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. That's but, but a lot of people, because I would go, you know, some places and they wouldn't be collecting the tax. And so it took a, it took people a while to start start fully collecting it. So it'll still increase some, but it's a significant increase. But, you know, 500000 in one year is a lot. It how, won't increase that much. How do we know whether they're collecting it or not or sending it in or? Well, I, I just look at my receipt when I go someplace. Well, that I do too. Yeah, but and no. then the only other way would be when the Department of Revenue goes and audits somebody afterwards. Okay. You know, based on the numbers, it looks like everybody's doing it. It does, so, yeah. yeah. And what, what, were, what was our projection for, uh, for this past year? For what, were, what did we hope to get? Well, we were just hoping for $2 million, yeah. you know, so we're doing, I, we're doing I, very I think an original financial plan Throughout the entire 20-year bond payment was 
That's yeah. I think yeah. that's what we started. At. That's yeah. what we started with. So we're we're this yeah. is going very well, man. So yeah. 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 Oh, but I, I think I think it's important to acknowledge though that um, there there this still doesn't cover the full bond. You know, we, so the, the, the remainder of our financial plan that we were using still needs to be used, but probably not to the extent that we thought. And that, that's the next that's page? The, yeah, there. right, it's that yeah. third last column there. Yeah, so certainly this is great news from, from our standpoint, from finances. But. It's awful close to that bond amount of payment. Well, so well, in this projection sheet, I used a 2% inflation rate. So, you know, yeah. if it's more than that, then yeah. we'll be doing better. Well, so the, 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 the two combined, or we actually had three combined bonds for this pro, for these two projects, right? Right. We had a capital improvement bond and two jail bonds. And the, the total of the three of those? 53 million. Yeah, so, you know, can you imagine by, you know, financing a house for $53 million, you're paying a lot more than that over 20 years. Yeah. You know, so when you, you know, you take uh, three million and multiply that times twenty, you get sixty million. And so we're that right there tells you we're going to be short. You know, but short, and not not just from the standpoint of the bond or the sales tax being able to pay for it all. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Very good report. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on that? Thank you. Thank you for the update. Okay. Any further then? Or? Okay, just a reminder next Monday, where else is closed. So, uh, I think with that, we're adjourned. <laughs>